Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Welcome to the Po Show, T Radio. Oh my gosh, that is loud. <laughs> anyway, she's back. Oh, now it's really low. I can't hear it all. We'll get this worked out. My headphone. My headphone. Hey. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're live. T Radio V, the Po Show. We've been on a little vacation for just a little bit, but some amazing stuff has happened in the meantime, and I'm going to talk about that first. One is. Po show guests, model Jacqueline DePaul. Um, Jake, I'm going to need you like right away for the first cut because this is kind of a big deal. The dude <laughs> is wadded up in his pocket. Um, okay, so Jacqueline DePaul and Leslie Pedraza, who's been on the Po show. So Jacqueline is a model, and Leslie is an amazing photographer, used to be behind the camera. Um, covering uh, Cosmopolitan magazine, so she's she's no dummy at this. They just got the Dubai magazine cover. So can you show that, Jake, real quick? That's so amazing. And that's Jacqueline, and that is um, Leslie's amazing photo. Okay, so I know we talked about that during the show of um, Jacqueline DePaul and Leslie Pedraza, and also Yellow Brick Run- Runway. That is actually what they do. Is so all of you creatives out there. They do, they create this whole scenario, this whole photo shoot from top to bottom, from location to, to uh, fashion, to hair, makeup, the whole entire thing. And then they sell it. And that's what they did in this instance. So they picked it up, Dubai. This is a major magazine, major cover. So congratulations, ladies. And you're going to be back on. As you know, you are. Okay. Also, a big congratulations to Brian Viveros, which I went to his opening, I think that was last weekend, um, at Think Space Gallery. What a huge success that was. That was so amazing. Um, it was a successful opening. All I saw was a bunch of red dots on like every single painting. Almost everything was original. There were a few giclés in the back, but almost everything original. His giclés were like one of one, or they were very small. Um, support the gallery that supports the artist. So whatever the gallery that is, in this case, Think Space, Think Space does an amazing job. Keep going, keep going with that. You guys are amazing. And I'm trying to, trying to get Andrew on here at some point, but we'll see if that happens. Okay, so Jake, can you, can you go to um, just those few photos of Brian Vivera's show? Um, I think there's only three photos. I know, straight to clips this time, huh? Got him. Oh, did you already do it? <laughs> It's been a while. I've been on hiatus. I'm sorry. You just had a vacation. I mean, you just had a, a anniversary, Jake. How many years again? Oh, all right, party people. Yeah, I just had my uh, five-year wedding anniversary on uh, Friday. So uh, it was Friday the 13th. It was a good one. You guys are so awesome. And we couldn't come to your, your um, Halloween party. How was it? Was oh, it great? Yeah, it was off the hook. It went till 3 in the morning. The cops came three times. That's a good party. That's, That's a good always party. a good party. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You have to force me to shut it down. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on. So today we're going to be talking about freeing the muse in a, lot of, in, in a lot of aspects, actually, because we have some great people here today um, to explain that and, to, and people that actually do that have, have learned how to, how to free theirs and have made a living at it. So it's really great. So we, we want to talk about how, how you can not only tap into your creativity but make it work for you. And I, 
I think this is the best time to do that. I think creativity is it's right now. This is when we're needed. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't know that yet. Maybe the public doesn't know that yet. Maybe, a, 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 you know, but the innovators, the creators, that's us. And that's what's needed right now in today's society. Because the same thing's not working. I know you've heard this a million times from me, but same thing's not working. We got to, we, we got to, we got to, we got to reinvent. We got to. Okay, so with me today, I have spiritual and imaginative artist and i i use that just because i thought it was super relative adam stone hello hello talking to that microphone talking to that microphone thank you for having me i'm looking forward to the uh, experience (laughs) it's going to be an experience for sure okay quadruple threat i use that because you are and you're even more than that Okay, Abe, you, you, all the listeners remember Abe, I'm sure, from Evan Stone and the Translucent Ham Sandwich Band, which was kind of tripping me out because when, when I was doing all this, did you notice the stone right next to your name? Oh, wow. Adam Stone? I and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you have to talk. About I didn't notice that. Okay, so she's a, a songwriter, vocalist, instrumentalist, performer, performer, but not just a performer, she, she's a fire dancer. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, wow. and she's didn't an amazing. Know that. She's an amazing songwriter, amazing singer, uh, amazing flautist. I don't know if I've heard you on the keys, so I can't say that, but I'm sure you are. Actually, I, I've heard you. I saw your video, though, and that's yep. piano. Okay, and we have Julie Belmont. Hi, thank you for having me. And Julie Belmont is a certified holistic creativity coach, author, intuitive. And um, she's helped me. so anybody needs to tap into their creativity or needs to um, figure out how to make that work for them in today's environment you have to look up this girl okay we're going to get into like what how does this happen okay who, who do we start with let's see start with adam now adam you were you were born into a family of professional artists i was so you had you had basically no choice. You didn't know anything other than I so, didn't. No, so no. Tell us a little bit about your history as far as that goes. Well, born and raised here in Los Angeles. So uh, I was born into a household where my mother was sculpting and raised three children by selling her sculptures, her her basically handmade figurines of her children and animals in the street shows in the early '70s here in Los Angeles and. So I was born in a household where we were constantly tripping over castings and, and clay, and so we were encouraged at a very young age to, to follow that pursuit that was obviously in all of our bloods. So I'm the eldest of three. And you started actually um, working professionally at 17. I was 17 years old. Yeah, my uncle had a restaurant on the Venice Beach Boardwalk uh, called Fig Tree Cafe. Um, it's it's been there forever. One of the first organic, all organic Which, restaurants. Oh, Abe's too young. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a little tiny baby, and you weren't here yet. Were you still in Canada? Um, I came down here in 1980. So oh, okay. Yeah, I was here. Yeah, so I started selling my work uh, in the back of his patio on the Venice Beach Boardwalk. I was 17 years old. I was selling my my paintings for like 30 and 40 dollars, or or a sandwich, or a, you know, a dime bag, or <laughs> whatever <laughs> they wanted to give me. I was I was I was willing to to, to make anybody happy. And I did that for a couple of summers. And uh, and you've done that for 20 years now. <laughs> in a way, I've done that for 20 years. No, no, I've done that for almost 34 years. Wow. Now. Yeah, yeah. You don't look like you could be that old. Well, thank you. Thank you. So I met Adam at the Long... What did they call the, that area? The Long Beach... It's, is it Avenue? It's the Long Beach Avenue Lofts. Long yes. Beach Avenue Lofts. They yeah. had an opening. Um, Van Arno knows him. I was with Van Arno, so he, he knows um, Adam, but... When th- what an amazing place. How do you like it? You just moved in. I just moved in a few months ago, and they had an opening, like, right after I moved in. So, yeah, it was uh, about a month of grabbing furniture, making the place that lived in, mm-hmm. and, and hanging my work. And then, boom, there's three or 400 strangers in my living room, like, 20 minutes later. But um, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's an enti- I've never lived downtown. I've lived everywhere all over L.A. except for downtown Los Besides Angeles. Besides the terrible roads that used to be train tracks, <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the area. Well, it's because my mini doesn't like that at all. No, 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 <laughs> it's yeah. Terrible. Stay off Alameda, you know. But um, <laughs> it's an entirely different landscape. I'm enjoying a lot of it, and, and some of it is is a little bit tedious. You know, getting to and from places from downtown LA can be a little hairy at times. You yeah. know, the five is always jammed up, but. Um, there's a lot of creativity happening there. I mean, it's really hard to not be inspired in that part of the city right now. You know, don't you think, do you feel like it's a, a growing area? Well, f- just look at the real estate. No, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean in the, for the arts. For the arts, uh, 
You know, I think yes, and I also think no, because it's becoming so expensive to even live there yeah, now. That's what it happened used to, to Laguna. Yeah, it used to be, you know, hey, this is the, the community where we can go and be ourselves and, and paint on walls and bridges and, and, and have a beautiful place and be amongst everybody. And now it's becoming almost unaffordable for the average person. And so artists, I don't know how they're going to be able to hang out. I mean, it's just they're building it out. It's it's a million dollars for 1,300 square foot lofts. So yeah. what do you think about that, um, Abe, as far as the arts district in L.A., about its rather fascinating to me really I mean yeah. my neighborhood is uh, right up the road in Echo Park mm. and the space in between I think is really interesting right now it's I mean even where I am I've felt it change from when I moved in there everybody on the block knows me as that white musician chick and I totally oh, yeah, yeah. stood out like a sore thumb yeah. carrying my gear in and out yeah now it's you know the the sort of hipster crowd from Silver Lake exactly. has made its way down and that fringe has moved a couple blocks over and you know you can see the real estate changing yeah. by the week in that area and I mean it's really interesting I love I love living in a transitional area like that yeah so you can you but know where do you think it's trans overlapped. where do you think it's transitioning because I mean I think part of the draw in bringing people in it uh, it's always going to be the artists or the Definitely. creative people because we're the ones that keep everything exciting and interesting what what is it without that it's a drab you know people aren't going to stay without that yeah. which is weird that they push us out in a sense I don't think they are meaning to do that yeah, and well, it's not them. It's actually not them. It's, it's you well, know, it's just people, the people looking that to own make the property. Money. No. <laughs> it all comes down to the dollars, you know. So, the arts are the arts bring people to the city, and yet the big money is what's ultimately going to be making out. those decisions. Yeah, so, and it pushes them out. Yep, to make new interesting neighborhoods and new abandoned warehouses and things. So you Super know, the area is like you know, but um, temp. What is it, Pico Union? That area, I think, will be an interesting one in a few years. Over Highland Park is really happening, and that one is not super expensive yet. So it'll still, find its space. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, still, I mean, I'm an optimist. I think that we're, we're, the artists are still going to find their space. I think there's going to be a place for them because hopefully, maybe even through this show, we'll be able to um, realize, you know, the general population will be able to realize how important this is. You know, the, the, the creatives, we make the world go around. We make it interesting, like I said. What do we have if we don't have the arts? I always say that. What do we have? It would be so drab. I mean, we as they artists, don't. of course, we mm -hmm. want it. But what about the people that, that, you know, like to watch it or hear it? Everybody does. Everybody likes entertainment, right? right. The artists are the, the, the real communicators. And without, without this type of whatever medium you're, you're expressing through, I don't see how the world can connect. There's you know, and, and, and that's what I think is um, our responsibility as creatives. Because back in the day, I mean, I always think of Bob Dylan. I know that's kind of obvious. But somebody that uses their art form to put it out there and affect society, that's what we're, that's, so this is not a time for us to be lazy and sit back. And that's why we have her here too. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, how do how do you think we can bring this to the forefront and and show everybody how important this is and get people that do have creative blood in them or 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 inspiration or drive in them to let it go and to actually use it in a good way for this movement, the creative movement. I feel that. Uh, creativity and art in all shapes and forms is a way of communication with everybody. It, it, you know, it goes through language barriers and racial barriers and Everything. any barriers. It just goes right through. Exactly. And when you have the uh, type of idea of people saying the starving artist, as we can see, we have to transition through that. And that's what I try to do is to help people go, you don't have to be a starving artist. You can learn to market yourself and tap into your creativity and be able to go ahead and really grow and become a part of the community. And I see that in the area of Santa Ana. We were talking about different regions. Uh, the area of the art group there and the streets and like Broadway and all those are just the hub. And some of the apartments, yeah, are expensive, but that's just kind of gets you to the next level as you want to put your art there which is creates an emotion and that's what we have to tap into the emotion of people and translate that into financial wealth so we can do our art and communicate with the world. 
communicate with the world and make it useful and be able to pay our rent. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. We're going <coughs> to, this isn't really an official break, Jake, because we're just going to show that video. So it's not an in and out, but we're going to show some Adam Stone pieces. So oh, enjoy. Wow. It. This is a nice surprise. I'm not even going to look. <laughs> I have no idea what you, you got, got up there. You got to see everything. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. I think I just saw the last 30 years of my life flash that's what I try, That's what I try to do. <laughs> no, I actually, I did everything in the last two months that you saw, <laughs> believe it or not. I don't know. That was that. wonderful. That could wow. be. Wow. That was great. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to quote you. Oh, no. I know. Don't you hate it? But <sighs> like I said, I'm not going to... Half the time, I don't know what I'm saying anyway, so go work. Yeah, well, me neither. Yeah. And I have a talk show. I'm winging it. <laughs> 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 yeah, <right. laughs> Okay, so Adam says, when I, and I love this, because this, r this really resonates with me. When I paint, I feel closest to my true self, my life's purpose. It is in this free-flowing space where my impulses, intuition, trust, and intention work in complete harmony with my ability and deep desire to create. I feel so blessed to be able to communicate through my work and look forward to continued growth and exploration, both as a man and as an artist. And, you know, to me... That's um, not only is this, you know, if, if we're expressing something that's going on in, well, I won't say particularly Paris, but if you're, we're expressing something that's going on in the world politically or whatever, whatever, in whatever sense it is, you can, you can really have a voice and have an opinion and put it out there without really, well, I guess you can offend people, but with art, it's just, um, you have that means of expression. And like Julie said, it is, um, it's, like, it's like love, which is kind of corny, but there aren't any language barriers with love or falling in love or, you know, expressing love in whatever country or area you're in at all. I think it's the same with art. There's so much of a through line with art, with music too. You don't have to understand the words they're saying. You can feel, you can feel the... Um, the romance or the drama or the um, just whatever that really gets you without hearing the words or knowing the words. It can be instrumental and it'll get you, you know, it could be an orchestra and you can, I can see the visions in my head. I'm, I'm sure most people can, but in an orchestra and where that takes you, that journey, it takes you. I mean, I'm a cellist, so I guess that has part of it, but it's, um, you can see it. And so it doesn't matter. There's no words to it. But there's, even if you don't have the vision, if you have the ears, they can create a vision sometimes. It's so anyway. The vibration, <coughs> I would say. Is, you know, I the guess. The vibration kind of gets you to a higher level and that it's, you know, has no barriers. Okay. 
since you said that. Oh, oh no. You oh. Gonna see, <laughs> you're going to talk a little bit more, more about that, Julie, because that's kind of what you do. You free the muse forevermore. Yes. And mm-hmm. you, um, people that, that, that have the desire to, to be an artist or feel that there's something in there, a lot of times there's things that are blocking people so they, they can't express that, something that's holding them back, something that um, could even be a tragedy in their life. Who knows? could right. be anything, right? So tell us exactly what you do for your profession. Well, I help a lot of people who have like ancient tapes, things that perhaps a teacher said or a family member, or, like we've all heard, oh, get a real job, don't be an artist. You oh, know, you I hate that. You heard about the starving artist, whatever, you know. And that blocks you. I also had teachers in my own life that at one point said, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Don't, don't do art. Just, just forget it. Just because that particular project that they wanted, they envisioned something. I didn't envision the same thing. So we were not on the same page and they decided to say, no, I was not a good artist. Well, those sometimes can block us. So oh what yeah. I do as a certified hypnotherapist at times, I have to pull those tools together. As an intuitive, I pull those tools together, whatever it takes, you know, a, each client is different. But once you kind of run over those old tapes, <laughs> CDs, whatever, records, vinyl, whatever you want to put out there, depends how old the person is, uh, you know, then you can clear the road for their creative success to say, the main thing is to allow themselves to give themselves permission to do what they want. And then once they open that flood doors, <laughs> it's yes. like the floodgates, and then to just go forward and then just keeping the momentum. Because once you're successful, even a little bit of success, that draws more success. And it's just about saying, you are able to do that. Just free the muse, let her fly, and then follow where it leads. Okay, so Abe, you're, you're a good example of that, but you've done a lot of study too in prep for that, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, with music and with the business side of it. Because of it. I, I, I um, okay, so you studied uh, modern ear training concepts, alleviating performance anxiety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Inclusive awareness. Yes, this is all stuff. Um, I worked with the Alexander Technique a lot in the past, so that definitely influenced that. Um, I'm a certified yoga teacher too, which now has found its place just in when I'm teaching music. I do yoga for musicians workshops, and well, it's know, still it's mind, body, spirit. That's exactly, exactly yeah, exactly. 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 You guys talk about the same language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can relate to that, but did it come naturally, or it really you really needed those courses, or you just knew that that would help you? I think it's all of it. I mean, I think. A lot of my creative path has been sorting out those those roadblocks of my own, you know, everything that you pick up as you're developing as a personality and then you have to like work through it and you know, to free myself, that's how you know, I I build myself a bridge with these words. That's one of my song lines, but yeah. my songs say it best. And a lot of times they say things that I haven't really figured out yet. Which is so. is exactly what I'm talking about, too. Because putting it out there in a creative form enables, like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have those same questions. They're like, okay, gosh, I can totally relate to this. Mm-hmm. There's no answer at the end of the song. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and that's what art is like, okay, I can totally relate to this. or Right? Whatever. That's what right. we're here for. Right? Isn't that what we're here for? Yes, we are. <laughs> and, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what other. I call us the creative cult or the creative culture. Anybody like that has that um, that ambitious creative side. Like this is the way we work and the what what's r- super important to us and how we're trying to make it work mm-hmm. and make a difference. I mean, this is this is what we need. We can't. I always talk about the the hamster wheel. You know, nobody wants to be on it anymore, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere anymore. Not that it wasn't at one time, but what are your views on that, Adam? Being being a self-promoted, self-made man your entire life since it's 17, what do you think about that? Can you repeat that? <laughs> Probably not. Maybe with another glass of champagne. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I think going back to the career aspect yeah. of it all, you know, I think as artists, I mean, not that I think it's been easy for you. I know it hasn't well, been easy. Well, you know, it's, I guess that's all relative. Depends yeah. on who you ask. But, you know, as an okay. artist, you've got to find whatever your expression is, whatever your medium is, I think you've got to find a way to connect with what it is you're trying to express and connect with the source of what, where this is coming from within your spirit. And once you lock in on that, or at least you hone in on that, then you begin the process of cultivating 
and that might be writing more music, you know, writing another book, painting constantly to discover your chopping wood, to discover what is it that I'm trying to say. No, but don't you think everybody needs to do that process? If you're an artist or not, well, I mean, or if you consider yourself an artist or not, it's that creativity. It's actually, I mean, I told you I wore this for you. This right. is Ganesh, right? Isn't right. it Ganesh? <laughs> I can't see it. I'm thinking it's Ganesh. It's oh, okay, elephant, I, right? see, I see one eye. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay, okay so, uh, and Ganesha, properly said, is he takes away the obstacles. Right. You know, so it, it's kind of that. And I think in art, at least for me, in writing, I mean, I, I write, I paint, but that's not, I mean, I don't do it for a living, but um, I would rather promote people who do. But that's a, um, it's a, it's a way to express and evolve, I guess you could say, and learn. Because we need to learn about ourselves to help the world. Like, what, what, am, what do I know? What, what do I think about? What do, what do I believe in? What, you have to know yourself before you can ever help anybody else. So I think more people that do that, and it's, it's probably, I don't know, in, in, in my experience, again, it's been, I've done that through the creative aspect in whatever way that is. If it's music, if it's, you know, writing, if it's painting, if it's in whatever you want to do, if it's cooking, if it's, you know, there's some amazing mixologists. We, I just went to one. Uh, anything like that that you're putting yourself into, I think that's a means of growth. What do you think, Abe? I think so, definitely. Because um, you do a lot of creative things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for myself even, for example, when I learned fire spinning, that was because I was, I needed to step back from music. And uh, so that was something that like, let me go through that process again and remember what it felt like to learn from the start. So that's, uh, <laughs> oh nice, got a lot of <laughs> Burning Man pictures and stuff. Yay. Yeah, so I mean, that to me was something that really let me rediscover my creative side and then, you know, brought it back into and the way I am I couldn't help it and I ended up starting doing it professionally and exactly working into the music and stuff but and you realized you know, that was, was part that was part of you that yeah. was part of it that was part of your thing and you probably learned a lot from yourself in Absolutely, doing yeah. that so and I'm always looking for you know I'll, I'll pick up new instruments and things and I just love that learning process and I love sharing it with other people and that's your big draw to Evanstone and the Translucent Ham Sandwich Band because you get to basically do whatever you want. What it's a fun. great name. Yeah. What was that again? <laughs> you know what? You, you, anybody who hasn't seen Evanstone and the Translucent Ham Sandwich Band ha absolutely oh, have to. I was yeah. actually really <laughs> ill. When was that? Two weeks ago? Uh, November 5th. Two weeks ago. Wasn't it two? Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was so that. sick I couldn't come and I was super bummed because I've actually performed in that painting improvisationally which with the lights out for three hours, which I have no idea what I came up with. Um, but that's, improv is a great way, and it's scary, right? It's probably not for you well, anymore. It definitely but can be, yeah, it all depends on the situation. Your, you're putting yourself <laughs> all out there. Yeah, like yeah it's what, definitely what a do good you, challenge. What you got? Yeah. <laughs> and you can't be afraid to do it. And it's, it's fun to work with Evan, too, because he enjoys, you know, pushing people and pushing the audience. And but he I, does know. that. He he pushes you to do that, to do what you feel. Right. It, it motivates people. You know, it motivates it motivates the audience to think outside the box, and you know, motivates all the creative people involved to to play a little differently than they might on a different night. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back with you with more of this discussion. And anybody who wants to call in, feel free to do that. We'll give you the number soon. The art of the shot. The art of the shot. Right? The art of the shot. It's the shot. I'm gonna make out with the mic. Do it. You can look it hey. if you want to. There's been some hot women on it. First time I actually touched um, an SLR. As soon as you lock that focus and hit the yeah. trigger, it just snapped. And I was like, oh, this is sick. Yeah. And this is why I use these shitty cameras, because I could have like a $20 hole exactly. got throw it on my back, and if I drop it in the dirt, it didn't it's matter. Okay. Uh, it could it's add character to it. Right. You have to have a really good connection with your photographer. Exactly. I mean, like when you meet them, like it has to be there, or it's not going to be. 
but I was pissed scared to shoot people. Yeah. Because it's, it's a really hard thing to do. It's well, like, and it's, it's illegal like, to shoot people. <laughs> you know, the best thing photographers love hearing is your camera takes great pictures. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> you're a total freak. Oh, yeah. In all ways. Definitely. <laughs> I, I, That's why you're on the show. <laughs> I don't like to do the standard, like, I'm going to look really sexy in this bikini. Like, yeah. I want to do something weird. I want to be covered yeah. in mud yeah. and, like, come yeah. out whatever I want to do. You were trying to sell me your junk, and I was all over it. I was all over Brian's junk. I charge by the inch. <laughs> it gets really expensive. <laughs> Find you. Yeah, probably, probably posted up to a wall in a post office somewhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the Poe Show, T Radio V Hollywood. Okay, so guesting on the November 30th episode, write this down, of the Poe Show is Noah Ng and Jason Mazilis. They just, um, they just came up with a new album. It's a ragtime album. They're a ragtime duo, or they call, them, or they call it Rag Honk, too. Amazing. You got to check them out. Two weeks, from, two weeks from today, that show, November 30th. We'll feature them, and they're, they're really, you can't miss it. It's going to be super great. Not that this one isn't. This is a great show, too, but this is a whole different, whole different thing. Noah is actually um, the bartender at the piano bar, <laughs> and Noah and I have become friends over the last few years from doing the shows at T-Radio V, and he is, over the years I found out, he's an amazing musician. He, um, he creates the slides out of bottlenecks. Um, and looking further into Noah's past, he has a documentary made about him. Um, like I said, he has this, uh, this band. They just came out with this new ragtime thing, but he has a long time. Do you know Noah Ng by any chance? I met him with you, actually. Oh, at the piano bar. Yep. Last He's going to be on show. in two weeks, and it's, oh, um, my. I know. I'm hearing this and saying, oh, cool. Like it's <laughs> so crazy. Oh, my God. It's so funny. He's got all these uh, these music videos. He has, like I said, this documentary. They have this book coming out. Um, it's called, uh, what is it called? Thousand Dollar Caddy or something. All these photos of Noah in the desert. Anyway, super funny persona. Great bartender. He's only there Friday and Saturday, so you have to get him while he's there. But um, anyway, I just want to announce that's coming up. Um, Jake, did you did you catch that? Um, I do have their um, one photo. I don't know if that's going to be their album cover, but that's the Noah Ng and Jason Mazilis. Yeah, it's cut nine. Um, okay, so also, if you plan to be in Hamburg, Germany, between December 5th and December 23rd, stop by Fine Kunstkruger Gallery and check out the 10th edition of the international group show Don't Wake Daddy with participating artist Van Arno. So check that out if you happen to be in Hamburg. Okay, and one more thing I didn't talk about, um, Brian Viveris. He has a book that's available called The Dirty Land, it's The Art of Brian Viveris. Um, it's the debut collection of his works published by ThinkSpace, 216 pages. Um, a super popular publication, so check that out. Again, that show was wall-to-wall uh, -wall fans, and it was very good, and he's a very, very nice man. I'm hoping to have him on the post show shortly. Okay, we're gonna continue on. Um, there's one thing I wanted to touch back on with Adam. You had, in 2013, um, In the Blood group show. I did. It was a family show. It was. It was. Uh, so tell us about how what what that was like for for you. Wow. Had to have been emotional, huh? It, it was emotional then, and it's it's <laughs> and even it still emotional is. Are you gonna now. cry? I'm always gonna cry. Because no. if you cry, we're all <laughs> gonna no. cry. We're gone. <laughs> but um, it was a very special event. My mother mm -hmm. uh, pretty much taught all of us how to not only get into the the realm of 
our creativity and, and, and nurture it, but also how to sell our work and, and, and apply the commerce that you need and the administration skills that you need to, to basically right. succeed. And she passed away <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah. And so her dream was always to be able to have a show with her children and with her husband, my father, and it never really came to fruition while she was alive. Uh, and yeah. so she was able to take part of this mm -hmm. great show, you know, and, and we had a ton of friends and, and it was a, a packed space uh, at the whole nine gallery in Culver City, a really fun space to work with. And now that I'm thinking back, my father just passed away four months ago. Um, and so, so it has so a new meaning. So that's relevant again. Yeah, yeah relevant it, has, it has a new meaning. Okay, and also, um, you did a wallpaper design that I thought was so cool. Can you go to that clip, um, Jake? Oh, there it is. So this is kind of an wow. interesting way yeah. to to do art. I love I love that. That's so cool. This is cool, and <laughs> I, I wish I had it in my loft. Actually, no, <laughs> I, I, it is it is it's so amazing. I, that, I love it so much. Isn't See, that? There are no there are no restraints to creativity. That's what no. I'm saying. You know, we we can keep recreating, recreating. Well, you this know, is the challenge that we all face. Is is number one being true to our. Our, our spirit, being true to what we want to say with our work, yeah. and at the same time, figuring out a way, or various ways, to reach people that will in turn buy the work, not just yeah. appreciate the work, no, buy the CD, you know, uh, subscribe to the channel, yeah. listen to the show. This is an entire, you need another three shows no, based on all of the possibilities no, that are out there. It's true. But I think artists in these days have to be like water. You gotta flow. You gotta be exactly. able to see things in twenty different directions because water, as in a tsunami, though a yeah. tsunami <laughs> wave, not water as in placid. Well, you have a reach right now. There could be people listening to this show, uh, you know, ten thousand miles away. <laughs> yes, hopefully <laughs> in Hamburg, Germany. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, we have the ability now as artists to to instantly reach people yeah. where we never had that mm -hmm. ability, and yet there's a billion people doing it at the same time you know so attention spans are kind of shrinking along the way <laughs> no, there's a lot true. of stuff out there but it is a challenge for us how to be true to ourself and at the same time be able to to pay bills be able to to, to do it as a vocation have it as a career uh, you wear 20 different hats and you got to wear them all well no and you, you know, know that yeah, as, yeah. as long as yeah. 17 years old 17 years old till now yeah okay so julie has a few books. I actually, she gifted me this one when um, Wayne Dyer passed away, yes. and I mm -hmm. was visiting Julie, and I did read it from cover to cover. And she had, um, she has a little, uh, it's a page, page and a half, yeah, or a little a couple chapter, pages. yeah. But all of them are just pet chapters. Yes. But this is fantastic. Seizing your success. Um, this is also, and Jake, I know I have these on the sheet, but you don't have to show them. I think you can oh, see them. This is okay. <laughs> The path to personal success and freedom. Oh, <laughs> turning hurdles into stepping stones. And this was what ten years ago or something. Yeah, that came out in uh, Valentine's Day in two thousand and five. Yeah. And then, but your newest book. This is from two thousand fourteen. Yes, that's. And this is creativity business plan for artists and artists at heart. A step by step guide for discovery to implement the implementation of your creative potential. So this is actually, uh, tell us a little bit about your, your latest book, Julie, because well, I think it's most relevant yeah, to that is, now. Um, a lot of things that happened since do that, I mean, you know, 10 years ago, so. Yeah, this is it important. has, but that's um, basically like Wayne Dyer, you mentioned, yeah. you know, and he always said that we're spirit first, having a human experience. Exactly, yeah. And as artists, we're basically bright brain, you know, they say everything is with the bright brain, the visionary, the imagination. So what we need to do is, as spirit beings who are, have limitless potential, is to tap into the left brain and make those two make work cohesively, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what I, I teach and I consult on, is like if you can tap that energy and bring it together, then not only can you create and be phenomenal at creating your, whatever is your music, your ca canvas, your sculpture, but also be able to promote it because a spirit there's, you know, you can create like that wallpaper. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, what's next? What's the next level? There is no blockage. It's just let it live, fly, uh, fly free. Okay, we're gonna go to Abe's video. Mm. Um, Jake. 
<laughs> um, Abe. Abe's video because um, this is this is recent. This is um, your your newest released um, EP, right? Yes. And how many? There's six. Is there six songs on there? Five songs. Five on songs on there. Yep. And they're fantastic. Oh my Thank goodness! You. So you have to check it out. And also, um, that is that who who is um, who is the record label? Abeness Records on that. It's <laughs> self released. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's kind of my segue. Is yeah, <laughs> this is a self released, self promoted, self everything um, album, and this is a fantastic video. And you can talk about you know who helped you with it or whatever. Yeah. Or if you did uh, it on your cell phone, who knows? People no, do. Yeah. My my friend Karuna Tanahashi is a um, fellow fire spinner and also great fellow fire spinner. <laughs> She's a great uh, video can you editor say that one and more director. Time? Fellow fire spinner. Mm -hmm. I got lots of them. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take a look. Can't come me for love and can't come me for fun. Don't come to me for all happiness, cause I ain't got none. No, I ain't got none. I work early every morning. And you hear him speak my name Okay, welcome mm. back. Okay. Wow. wow. <laughs> Doesn't Thanks. that like, Beautiful. say a lot, right? Oh, because yeah. it's like you're trying to juggle everything and the time's ticking. It's just kind of relevant to what we're even talking about. And relevant to the times, you know, it's just like, you know, what do you what do you do as creatives? We have to just we have to keep going. We have to just keep going, keep doing it. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. like, <laughs> That's the feeling pretty much. <laughs> the end of the song, yeah. The end of the song. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, panic. <laughs> it builds. Okay, so um, in what was this 2014? Yeah, um, Adam, you painted a, a piece about that, about the music industry, a and commentary on how challenging it has become to oh, secure a record oh, deal oh, in yeah, this yeah, new yeah, digital. Yeah. I world. have a younger brother that's that's a very talented musician and plays almost every instrument there is to play. And uh, I grew up in Hollywood, so I know what it's like to to have friends striving and very talented friends that are writers, composers, they play, play their instruments masterfully and 
struggle to be heard. And Isn't that weird? There's so much talent. I mean, I see it all the time because I'm always yeah. looking. You know, I'm scouting for yeah. people on the show. And there's, there is an, a, an amazing mm. amount of talent in all creative genres. That are, and these people are s- incredibly passionate about what they're doing and what they're saying and what they're, you know, their expression. And it's, it's, you know, it's not being seen as much as it should be seen. This, my main motivation for the show is to, for them to be seen. You know, it's, in my opinion, this is the best venue, right? Media, you know, visual, and audio, and that you can, you can go to live or archive on your cell phone or whatever device you happen to have. This is yes. what T Radio V is all about. And this is important for us as creative people to be seen because it's super hard to be seen now. Well, the wrong people have mm. the controls. You know, <laughs> the buttons are in the wrong hands. And you know who can fix that if anybody can? Well, the creatives that have the voice we, we that do. can make it happen. Mm. We can make it happen. Well, we are, and you are with this show. You know what? But it, it takes every creative to do that, to express yourself, put it out there however you can, however you can. But Abe, you're you're a yes woman. You know, you want to do yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. Yep. Yes. And those people, and Adam, you said yes, yes. Okay, yeah, sounds great. Julie, of course, yes. Yes, of course. And, you know, <laughs> as a creative, you have to do that. You want to be seen? Yes, of course I do. Yes. You want to show your, yes, I do. And we have three minutes and 26 seconds, so <laughs> I want to hear Abe do something. You can do whatever you want. You can, and now that I put you totally on the spot, <laughs> um, you, can, you can play that keyboard, you can sing a cappella, you can play that flute, because she can do it all, but I don't see, hear any music coming out of it works we'll use the keyboard if the keyboard doesn't work we'll do acapella <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic isn't that great all right well i'll play flute and sing because because you're that a superhero right now. <laughs> and if the if the uh, the fireman would allow it you could you know do some fire dancing but i don't right? think that's probably <laughs> it's a little more limited probably up venues. to code <laughs> So let's see. I'm going to do, this will be total improvisation because you like that. That's it's beautiful. It's a second track off the EP, and it is written about downtown and changing areas. So I probably won't get through the whole song, but this will be a never-before-done version of Ghosts. That's mm. beautiful. Ooh, ghosts. I like that. Dusty glass, overdated neon People digging through trash Why do I choose to take in the view? Say to the people in this room Here I am trapped in my head again I build myself a bridge back into the world With these words Got a part in these, these streets A history of the breeze These walls where dust still falls They say every house has got a ghost you can make peace with it you can stay here if you can make peace with it you can stay people are skating families and lovers coming and going in urban canyon draped with shining signs restaurants jewelers and show times now how many ghosts must walk these streets Haunt these walls where karma still calls on us to act out the inverse of our past. These streets, a history of the breeze, these walls where dust still falls. They say every house has got a ghost. You can make peace with it. You can stay here if you can make peace with it. You can't stay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, you guys 
like it, don't wow. you? Yeah. Oh my god. Blown Abe's, away. Yeah, Abe's the bomb. <laughs> you just are. You're so great. Thank you for coming, Abe. Thank okay, you so me. where where can we find you, Abeness? Uh yes, Abeness. <laughs> A-E-B-N-E-S-S dot com. She's a yeah, good example, right, there, Julie? Upcoming shows, De- definitely. All that stuff. She you know, she sees a hurdle and she just overcomes it or goes around it, but the main thing is to keep going. Determination. That's what got you here and besides great amazing talent. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of you with those lyrics though as I was singing them this time. Lots was, of yeah. things of the past and moving through them. So Well and, and Julie <laughs> actually clear clears houses too. <laughs> so yeah, which oh, was interesting. Nice. You heard yeah. those lyrics, I'm sure, right? You those know, lyrics. If you have a ghost <laughs> <laughs> Who are you gonna call? <laughs> Julie <laughs> Belmont. <laughs> yeah, Julie Belmont. So she she's at the Shocker Shack. If you <laughs> <laughs> awesome. if you you can look her up there. She's there on when are, when are you there? Tuesdays. 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 Tomorrow from eleven till three p.m. <laughs> and she's amazing. I'm serious. I, I Thank see Julie. You. That's how Thank I know you. her. So really? yeah. And no, Adam, Adam, yeah, wow. you could totally you go see her. houses. Well, she I does more than that. Yeah, She's, do yeah, that. she does lots of stuff. <laughs> okay, so Adam, where yeah. can we find you? Adamstone.com. Wow. Well, I've got a three-day show coming up the day after Thanksgiving. Three-day show coming up the th- Thanksgiving weekend in Palm Springs, California. And uh, let's see, after that, what's, what do I have going on? I've got a few months off to just paint and try to discover a new body of work. And, and I'm looking forward to, to getting in touch with some, some of my muses, wherever they might be. I'm calling them now uh, for some new inspiration. So. Okay, cool. Okay, Julie, where can we find you besides the Chakra Shack in Laguna Beach, California? Well, you can check at juliebelmont.com. And I also have a new website that I'm working on. It's juliebelmontswritingworld.com. And uh, this woman is a writer and also an artist herself and a coach. So check her out. Check us all out. Yeah. Okay, and anybody www.wetpuzzlepiece.com you can check it all out there and we'll see you next week another great episode coming up so check it out you are watching T-Radio V Radio and TV